The set 5 is so good. Like, this constructed format is excellent, and the limited formats are excellent. Like, normally when I was getting bored with constructed, I'd, like, go and play Skyrim. But now, like, when I'm bored with constructed, I'm drafting, and then there's Immortal, too, to, like, top all that off. There's just so much to be doing. Ada the Apparitionist here. This could be the deck, the, the um, Locket deck that went 7-3. Definitely a keep. Not a Locket deck. Could be a Blood Diamond Control deck, perhaps. Set 5, we're on 6, whatever, yeah, 6. Whatever the set is. I got no idea what's going on here, people. Come on, cut me some slack. Lead on the Sapphire coin there, because that requires a troop in order to discard it. It means we can't, uh, it means we can't rock cast on two. Hopefully that doesn't get us in trouble. I guess they had, like, Midnight Gatherer, could possibly, could possibly hurt us. I'm just gonna go ahead and play this Blood Threshold to Blood Shard for now. Because we're so resource heavy here, I'm actually just gonna cycle this Necropolis coin on two as opposed to Arcane Focusing. And the reason why I'm doing this is, I don't really know exactly what I'm looking for yet. I don't know if I'm gonna need a resource later, or if I'm gonna want a piece of action, so... I'm just going to go ahead and hedge. So our opponent's playing a Blood Diamond Underworld Crusader deck. So now we know we're looking for Transmogrifade. Something Borrowed, also reasonable. Might just take a couple hits from that and then something Borrowed it. That's probably something else we're going to want to borrow at some point. I'm going to play this Blood Shard out here. Yeah, probably just going to end up rock casting this. For, for people that weren't here earlier today, um, Declan decided he was going to wake up at about 1.30 a.m. And then he was awake from 1.30 a.m. till about 7 a.m. And I kind of slept while he was awake, but he kept insisting on, like, kicking me in the face and, like, sitting on my head while I was trying to sleep on the couch. So, this was probably a bad deck to choose to play while I'm on so little sleep. This was probably a bad deck to play while I'm on little sleep. Infinite Trick, sure. It's Transmogrifade right on time. Should have waited, Hoagland. Oh, Hogland, why do you make these decisions? I'm going to play this Vampire Prince. Thought it could be right to wait on the Princess until we have Verdict of the Ancient Kings up here, but eh. But Maddie, I, I am, I am a little tired. My opponent doesn't kill this princess, we'll probably transmog this so we can smack them. Oh, really? Okay. They have a uh, second tricks here? Okay, that makes sense. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and transmogrify this. Hopefully it's something that we can block profitably. For fuck's sake! <laughs> Alright, you get a Valor. Sure. Good beats. Yeah, you know, sometimes they have your number. At least this holds the phantoms at bay, kind of. I guess they could valor this. They could valor them up now. Oh, life sucks, and then you die, ladies and gentlemen. Never forget. Life sucks, and then you die. It's fine. That's why you play best of threes and constructed, you know. Get to minimize that variance from things like that. Yep, it's a good target for your valor that you got because I transbogged you. This was worse for us than infinite tricks, probably. Alright, well at least we get to use our last couple resources and counter this here. 
The way my wine configuration is set up right now, it's not really conducive. I also don't know if my computer will handle having Hex and Skyrim going at the same time. Un unsure how that'll go over. Well, I think we're just hitting this and drawing some cards and like hoping to... I guess if we hit like Bride here, we could be okay. Or removal spell. We could still hit Rockcast or Strangle. Okay, we can transmog again, I guess. Chip, chip in a chair, right? I will survive. Hey, hey. Oh, oh, oh. Man, Chris, you need to you need to refresh. You're like super far behind. Is there a scarier three drop we could give them? I'm sure there is. Nope, that one's fine. The deck is for six here, down to five. Watch it turn to a crusader, right? We are probably gonna borrow this phantom next turn. Hopefully they don't have another play here. Three. Oh, then we have to chant power to make a diamond threshold here. Ada plus something borrowed. Confirmed combo. They almost certainly have a piece of removal here. Like, they haven't been playing anything, so we're going to be dead in... Okay, now we're dead to removal because they had an Acropolis coin. Good beats. Hopefully we'll be a little bit more fortunate with our transmog next game. Slay me, opponent. Slay me! Whoa. Whoa. We have a cheap shot? This feels like a cheap shot. Or that. Yep, they do a lot of things there, including that. All right, third Vampire Queen sounds insane. Um, Vampire Prince seems medium minus. Uh... Do I want Misery? I want the Vampire Princess. Do I want Misery is a question. Definitely want a Gemborn Prowler. I want the extra Strangle. Kills infinite tricks. Rylanth seems fine. I don't want to cut the Verdict of the Ancient King seems bad. I'm not sure I actually want Misery. Like, I haven't seen things other than phantoms that it hit, so I think I'm just gonna submit for now. See how this feels. I'm not playing this deck to not keep hands like this. You know? Sometimes you look at your hand with five slow shards and two fives and a six and you're like, fuck it, we're doing it live. Mm. Plus, if we lose the first round, we can just drop and do something else. Like take a nap. Don't nap sound great. I'm a fan of naps. Watch him just go like 1, 2, 3 this game and just like hate my life. Ooh, Vampire Princess. Never didn't have it. Let's play the coin here so that way if we draw a Sapphire Shard next turn we can play our Princess out. Oh, Princessa. Oh, Princessa. 
These are literally all four. We have five slow shards in our deck, and we had four of them in our opener here. Gatherer. 2 1 speed, idiot. Actually drew five out of five slow shards. What a beating. What a beating. Remember the time they had this in their deck post board against our bride deck? Pepper Farm. We have seven? What? There's. Am I on four coins? We're on four coins, aren't we? I have a deck list to my left. You're right. We have seven. We have seven. Thank you. Thank you, Immortal Echoes. It's the. It's a different deck I have that's playing three. All right, two draws at a bride here. Two draws at a bride here. Come on, come on, bride me, bride me, bride me! Rats, we're so unlucky. Just, just the unluckiest. Least I have this two three that's about to die. I've got that going for me. Dude, it's on the left. It's way over left. I have to like turn my head and look at the third monitor. The epitome of first world problems. Yep, yeah, you get a shard. Well, if they don't have removal, this gets to block, but like 10 out of 10, this is about to die. Maybe they're rats. Maybe run four brides, right? Our hero has fallen. That's why we don't play four brides. That's why we have a tomb swap over the fourth bride, actually. No joke. Hero fall. Take a good hard look at it. Created another one of these poopers. Man. Am I just gonna borrow this? I feel like I'm just borrowing this. It, like cuts them off of getting more resources. Next turn we go shard, queen. The following turn we go champ power for diamond and get the midnight gatherer going. I love this card. Something old, something new, something bloody, something blue. It's okay, so used their champ power. It's like almost a vampire queen, but not quite. We've had seven, eight resources and 14 cards. Not too bad. Soul Slaver, yep. This is gonna suck a little bit when they have removal, but other than that, this is a decent line. Can we just like draw one of our brides so we can punish all of their X ones that they're playing that are awkward? Yes, they really do, Putty. You're not wrong. And they don't really want to attack with these, right? Because then, like, I get to attack with my vampire children. They don't have a piece of removal here. They're in a pretty bad spot. I could shift two things off of this. I'm pretty far off of getting double... Of getting double diamond with this, so I probably don't want to borrow this, but I might want to borrow it just to take it off the table, honestly. We'll probably lead on Blood's Favor next turn just to see what we find. We haven't really drawn much removal yet, so a good chance that we hit something that kills infinite tricks between three draws. If they're in the take here. Do they not have Shriggle? They must not, right? If they don't have Shriggle, they don't really have good attacks. I guess they could, like shift two things off of infinite tricks onto here so they could smack me. 
Yeah, that's what they're doing. So they're gonna put like life drain and steadfast on here and hit me for four that's unblockable. If he doesn't shift another one over, I'm 10 out of 10 trading Vampire Queen for this. That's interesting. Okay, deal. I like how we put flight on this one. Like, we already had flight on attack. Like, snap trading for this. Like, this one is the one that makes more Crypt Curse Knights, which could revert the infinite tricks. So, I feel like he's just supposed to make sure that gets through so he could revert the infinite tricks. But, you know, more power to him. Go ahead and play Blood's Favor here. If we actually find a Bride, we could double, double minus the infinite tricks and get it to our side. We also just, like, double minus these. Man, what a beating. Alright. Alright. I probably should have done Life Train. I agree. Um, hmm. Now the question is, do I want to hit this now, or do I want to save it for my Bride next turn? I probably want to just hit this now for Diamond and play this Midnight Gatherer out. Oh yeah, if he does life drain, he can make a phantom with soul saver too. That's much better. We draw a removal spell next turn will be an amazing spot, so we can go bride, kill this, kill this. Hey, cursey eyed. Sure. We've got three diligence troops here, so even if we miss on a removal spell, we can go bride, kill this. And then crack for three. They can trade with one of these and the other two will get to diligence. Hopefully our opponent doesn't have another necrotic here. If they have another necrotic, they can uh, revert this, which would be bad for us. I guess they can also put life drain onto here and then ship with... Oh, they have a bride of their own. Oh, that's not good for us. <clears throat> so they get one of my vampire children. Yep. I know what we're borrowing. They forgot to shift life drain. This is a really aggressive attack. Sure. <sighs> so we'll play this. I'll play this. I'll get my, get my vampire child back here. I'll go ahead and attack with these two, I think. No, I'm not even going to do that. Actually, I'm just going to go ahead and borrow this Bride here. And then, like, next turn, I can play this second Bride and then play a resource and knock some stuff down. I have more blockers this way, too. This way, anything I block in combat and trade with, the Bride takes over for me. Playing Bride in their deck that has, like... Crypt dust in it seems real ambitious. They got to the five thresholds, I guess, but like, oh man, did they draw a necrotic? That's they drew the best necrotic. All right, I'm not dead on board, am I? They could shift two off of this. I might be dead on board. Yep. Oh geez, if he shifts another one off of here. We can bride and take this next turn. That would be good for us. Am I dead? I can block one, two, three, and then take six. All right, not dead. I have to block everything, but I'm not dead. Can any of my things survive? I don't think so. I can go block, block, block. If I don't block like that, I'm taking... Nine and gaining two, I go to one. And then, like, I have this Midnight Gatherer here. Ah, that seems bad. Yeah, I'm just gonna block like this. Yeah, blocks like this. Go to four. Okay. And then he gets to make a Phantom here, because he gains some life. Alright, let's draw a piece of removal, please. That could be anything, even a piece of removal. 
Ding. All right, wow, we're might, we might win this game. I'm gonna play Bride of the Damned, because Bride of the Damned is a messed up hex card. Play this, uh, get two triggers here. She's gonna go take this, take this. And then we will choke a, choke a, choke a person over here. Take that phantom, we'll go ahead and strangle this. Mine please. All right, thank you. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and shift flight, steadfast, and life drain over to this one. Next turn, we get to play this and make two thresholds, or make a threshold and give minus two, minus two, and then we activate this and make give minus two, minus two, and take more stuff. Remember that time Bride of the Dam won, does, won us this game? Pepper Farm remembers. And then they need, like, From the Ashes at this point. And even then, we could just, like, shift before Strangle. No, this this says when you play a Necrotic, not when a Necrotic comes into play. So play implies putting a card on the chain. So it does not work how you guys are implying. If it did work how you were implying, you are correct. I should do it in the other order. But it, it doesn't work that way. So here I can I can show you here. We'll take this one, and it's not going to revert this infinite tricks. So see, still, still a one. I'll take that phantom, please. Thank you. Do you want to make another another giant bride of the damned? I feel like I do. I feel like I just want another giant bread of the damn. This was a this was a sweet game. Just like flooding a little bit in the beginning, kind of came down to the wire, but like pulled it out just the right amount of time. Something borrowed MVP as always. From the ash to be real bad. Look, don't play around things you can't beat. That's all I'm saying. So smash. They could triple block one of my brides, and then I get all three of their things. At this point, From the Ashes isn't even that bad, because, like, do they have a Vampire Queen in here? I guess they'd get a Vampire Queen. I was going to say, they just get a Bride and a Transmog it, but Queen's actually pretty good for them. What you got? What you got? What you got? You did! Alright. Do I want to change anything? I don't think so. No? Yep. I'm just going to run it back, Jack. This deck might not hate a second Rylanth in the 75. This card's really good in like these mid-range clustery mirrors against like Kaigalichu and other mid-range decks that just have a lot of troops out. The swings are hard and fast, ladies and gentlemen. And this deck that I'm playing is not uh, not something random or new, not something borrowed or something blue. Uh, we. Uh, this deck top 16 uh, the Platinum Plunder this past weekend, 400 players, Immortal Echoes was playing this uh, close to the 75, maybe exactly the 75. Uh, he went 8-2, missed uh, top 8 on tiebreakers. Been playing this deck on stream for a little while now. Yep, hand looks great. It's a little touch awkward that we have, like, two Sapphire resources in our opener, but Bride, Transmogrophage, Strangle, just, like, never mulliganing in a million years. pretty good. Uh, I think I'm gonna lead on a coin here. It might be loose. We can then, like, cycle this Necropolis coins on two, and then, like, strangle strangle on three, bright on four. Kind of like it. I feel like everyone playing... I feel like everyone was playing Bride of the Damned and the Platinum Plunder. Well, neither of the decks in the finals of the Platinum Plunder were playing Bride of the Damned, so... There's that. No, I don't think it's the wrong shard. I want to be able to cycle this coin on two, and I can't uh, I can't cycle the sapphire coin on two because I don't have a target for it. I don't think I want to play this Bride of the Damned out for no value, especially when we have all these other resources in our hands. So I'm just going to go ahead and pass here. 
if our first play is like Vampire Queen on six, that's fine. Like we have six resources, we'll just like curve out. You don't wanna, all of all of our troops in this deck, you wanna aim to get as much value out of as possible. Like these should be, these should be generating card advantage for us. Play your infinite trick so I can strangle it, please. There, there were, there were copies of Bride in the top eight. I said in the finals. The finals was uh, Empress versus uh, Redlings, neither of which are Bride of the Damn Ducks. Yeah, I think this deck's good against Redlings too, right? Like the two decks that were in the finals, this deck is good against. I also think this deck is good against the Kaigalichu decks. Like, I think if you would have made it into the top eight Immortals and you hadn't missed on Breakers, you'd have been a pretty strong favorite to win the tournament. Yep, strangle my princess, that's fine. Shard call, sure. They get to activate their champion power here. I'm gonna go ahead and just play this bride on five here and kill these phantoms off, especially now that we drew a tomb swap. I don't have a strangle here. Yep, we're gonna get to activate Uzu and kill this other one. And we'll take control of that one. Yeah, yeah, like the vampires just like do everything the control deck wants to do, right? Like they're must answer threats, they generate card advantage, they buffer your life total. What were you playing, Casual? Any any of the hero fall decks are good are good on average against the stock mono sapphire empress deck. Like, spent, spent a lot of time playing with Empress variations before the tournament, and, like, the Blood decks are the harder matchups. But the deck's, like, just so objectively powerful against everything else, I think it's still worth playing. Sure, so you're just like mono mono cards that like the the emperor the, that deck can't beat. That's annoying. Yep. They took my princess and not my bride. Deal. Um, I'm gonna play this and play this vampire queen. Awkward part here is if they kill my queen, I have to chump with a child. That's fine, I think. Ugh, that's a that's a beating. Huh. So here's an interesting question: Do I want to? Been the, I think I actually want to keep the transmografade here because I want to take this uh, vampire princess off the table so I can like crack them in the sky. Please don't have a strangle here. If they have a strangle here, we're gonna be all, if, they, if they don't have a strangle, we're in a really good spot. Deal. Perfect. Let's do this. Transmog this. Now if he wants to trade with one of my children, I get his Midnight Gatherer. So we'll just have a 10 point life swing here. This card's so powerful. It's so powerful. They like need to answer these now. And, like they need to answer the Bride. Wow. Deal. They have a From the Ashes as their last card. That that's their that's their get out of jail free card here is from the ashes. Rot Paw Gang. Sure, that's that's decent, right? We need to not draw not draw needs this to not draw removal now. All right, that could be anything, even removal. I'm 
And that's a princess, so we'll give that minus one, minus one for now, and then next turn we can play another one out. And then, uh... You jump the queen if you have ashes, that's fair. That's a good, that's a good read. Oh, if he sacks, I get the stuff. Oh, that's a good call. Thank you. Yeah, good call. All right, well now, now that's less exciting. Okay, no, let's draw, let's draw hero fall. You're right, I should have, I should have shipped with the queen last turn because I would have gotten either of his things. I don't know if either of these are better than my queen, though, honestly. Actually, this is good for us, right? Like, I get to go Blood Shard plus Champ Power and get rid of this thing? Yeah, that seems that seems okay for us since he double shifted. Which is good, since, you know, we're just drawing bricks. Um, yeah, shoot that. So he gives it life drain, sure. So now I just put flight on here, right? So that way this can block here. And now I just, and now I just offer this. Actually, I'm just gonna put life drain steadfast on here too, and then just like offer this trade here. Cause then like, I'm just gonna crush him in the air. Yeah, he doesn't want that trade. Sounds good. We're like trying to fade from the ashes. He's trying to fade any piece of removal. Okay. Yep. Ding. And if they attack, I'm like taking this trade here and then they die. And like with from the ashes being the card I'm trying to fade here, I just probably shouldn't even play this, right? Should I play the princess? Uh, should I play the princess? Uh, so if I play this, next turn, let's say he draws a random ground pounder. Um, I attack with everything. He like blocks here. He goes to 11, takes 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then he goes to 13. Yeah, I'm going to hold the princess just for like in case in case ashes happens. Like that's the that's the card that's beating us. Let's like play around it to the best of our abilities. Like this isn't gonna be great post ashes, but like it'll be better than not having it. Shard call deal. So that hits their hits their champion power and gives them some phantoms here. Deal. All right, looking for transmogs, looking for looking for a lot of different things. That uh, that's two things. Could be anything, even the things we're looking for. Oh, we get his troops from Ashes, right, got it. Yeah, let's play a second Bride. And then... Play this... Get a Vampire Princess and a Phantom. When I hit the two phantoms and force the block with the rot pop, 
That's fair. I'm a bit tired. I'm a bit tired, immortal. You're right, because he's dead on board, so he has to block. Just like making questionable life decisions. But it concedes. Yay! Remember, folks, the amount of justice in the world? Zero. Zero justice in the world. Get your Bride of the Dams now. Hexprimal.com. Use code JEFF5. You get 5% off your order. You too can crush your opponents with your wallet in Hex TCG.